In the opening scene, we are introduced to Sam, a musician residing in Paris. He pays a visit to his ex-girlfriend Fanny with the intention of retrieving some music tapes that he left in her possession. On that particular day, Fanny is hosting a lively gathering at her place, filled with numerous guests. Sam, who doesn't seem to be interested in the party, directly approaches Fanny and asks her to return his tapes. However, she is preoccupied with attending to her guests, so she asks him to wait for a short while. As a result, Sam sits alone on the couch, indulging in a few drinks. After waiting for 10 minutes, he grows increasingly impatient and once again approaches Fanny. This time, he says that he will retrieve his stuff by himself. He only wants the location. She finally tells him that the tapes are in the office room at the far end of the hallway. Fanny then instructs him to wait there, saying she will join him soon. As Sam makes his way towards the office room, he accidentally collides with a party goer, which hurts his nose. Still, he enters the room and begins his search for his belongings. In the midst of this, his his nose starts to bleed, prompting him to lock the door and rest until Fanny arrives. Not long after, a mysterious commotion breaks out just outside the office door, but Sam remains oblivious and continues sleeping. He awakens the following morning and proceeds to leave with his belongings, but as soon as he steps out of the room, he is shocked by a completely chaotic and disheveled apartment. Blood stains mar the walls, and he finds no signs of anyone inside. He slowly ventures into the stairway, only to discover that some people, including his ex-girlfriend, have been transformed into Z-words. When he calls out to her by name, they suddenly react by charging at him. Startled, he locks himself inside Fanny's apartment and tries to understand what's going on. Just then, Sam notices a family trying to run away from an adjacent apartment. However, they are easily overwhelmed and killed by the hundreds of zombies lurking outside. Witnessing this, a traumatized Sam realizes realizes that he cannot leave the confines of the apartment, so he begins renovating the room. As he is cleaning the bloodstained floor, he is suddenly jolted by the sound of a gunshot, causing the floor to shatter, peering through the resulting hole. Sam discovers that an elderly man has ended it all. Intrigued and determined to investigate further, Sam enlarges the hole using a pipe and descends to the lower level. There, he discovers a harrowing scene. A resident has committed the unthinkable after murdering his infected wife, whom he had restrained strained in a chair. Sam then gathers all the essential supplies, including food and the deceased man's shotgun, to ensure his safety. After this, Sam cautiously navigates the building and closes the doors to prevent more zombies from infiltrating. He meticulously searches each room, collecting useful items and marking the occupied ones infested with the undead. While inspecting the premises, Sam plans to return to Fanny's floor via the elevator, but he discovers a zombified old man inside. Despite this, he refrains from killing killing him, thinking that the zombie is harmless. Why would he think that? Instead, Sam secures the elevator door with a belt, preventing the zombie from exiting. After thoroughly checking the entire building, Sam concludes that the apartment, situated several stories above the ground, is the only secure place available. Following this, we get to know that the zombies have taken over all of Paris. They are very fast moving and respond in hordes to any sight or sound. The eerie silence of the zombies and lack of any significant noise adds to the atmosphere of dread. That night, Sam seeks solace in listening to his past recordings, providing a temporary respite from the tension. As the following day dawns, Sam keenly observes the movements of the zombies that have overrun the surrounding area. He then calculates the necessary quantity of food supplies to sustain himself throughout the ongoing invasion. Later, overwhelmed by pent-up emotions, he unleashes his feelings by blaring music at maximum volume, unaware that it can attract the creatures. <laughs> fucking idiot. Over time, Sam's routine revolves around activities such as playing music, exercising, and shooting the zombies with a paintball gun. However, one day, he detects a putrid smell coming from the floor beneath his room. Upon investigation, he comes across a couple of decomposed corpses, initially planning to dispose of the bodies by tossing them off the balcony. He has a change of heart and instead opts to pack them into a bag and place them back in their bed. He simply seals the hole in the door so that no more stench escapes. In the next scene, while taking a shower, Sam is caught off guard when the water supply is suddenly cut off. This compels him to find alternative sources of water. As a result, he arranges containers, bowls, buckets, and mugs on the rooftop to collect rainwater. During the night, Sam experiences a disturbing dream in which zombies invade his room and attempt to bite him, which startles him awake. As the days pass, Sam's isolation intensifies, plunging him into a state of desperation. Desperate for companionship, he often 
has a one-sided conversation with the zombified man in the elevator, whom he calls Alfred. One day, while practicing his shooting skills, Sam notices a stray cat wandering aimlessly amidst the undead. Desperate for a friend, he quickly rushes downstairs in an attempt to capture it. He offers food to catch its attention, but the cat instead walks away, prompting Sam to pursue it. Even in the apocalypse, cats are assholes. In the process, some zombies spot him and swiftly attack, but fortunately, Sam manages to narrowly escape back into the building, shutting the door in the nick of time. He also manages to make it back to the apartment, but he is so furious that he shoots at the cat from the window. The recent encounter causes Sam to sustain a leg injury. Fearing a potential zombie bite, he anxiously examines his face in front of a mirror, thinking whether he should commit the unthinkable. In a harrowing moment, he nearly blows himself up when he falls asleep with the shotgun beneath his head. Fortunately, upon waking, Sam realizes with immense relief that the wound is merely a minor scratch, prompting him to burst into laughter like a maniac. Several months pass, and with winter approaching, Sam grapples with the lack of heating. To keep himself warm, he improvises a fireplace, boils water, and takes a hot bath. The weight of loneliness gradually overwhelms him, causing his mental well-being to deteriorate. Seeking solace, he turns to alcohol and even vents his frustrations at the old zombie, Alfred. You son of a bitch, Alfred. One day, Sam notices that the streets are largely empty, without any signs of humans or zombies. Curious about the extent of their distance, he tests it by loudly playing a drum set. The sound serves as a magnet, luring hordes of undead back to the area, who even attempt to climb onto the apartment's balcony by piling on top of one another. An enraged Sam vents his frustration by continuing to play, despite the danger. This isn't World War Z after all, they can't climb that high. Later at night, Sam awakens to the sound of movement outside his bedroom door. Reacting swiftly, he grabs his shotgun and fires in the direction of the noise. As he walks out to check, he shockingly discovers that he has shot a woman who is a fellow survivor. Overwhelmed with guilt, he quickly carries her to his bed and attempts to save her, since she is the first uninfected person he has met. Sam carefully removes the bullets, applies medication, and provides her with a place to rest. Later on, he notices the woman's bag, which contains an abundance of rope and a grappling hook. It turns out that she utilizes these items to travel between rooftops in her journey. The following morning brings relief to Sam, as he observes the woman's steady recovery. They engage in conversation, and she introduces introduces herself as Sarah. As they share their experiences, Sarah reveals that she has met other survivors who have managed to endure the pandemic in a manner similar to Sam. Regardless, many of them have suffered mental breakdowns and descended into madness. Sam also shares his daily routine and tells her how he has survived thus far. In addition, he introduces Sarah to Alfred, explaining that they have been together since the beginning. However, Sarah expresses concerns about the risks of keeping a zombie in close proximity, as they pose a constant threat. Not Alfred, says Sam. He's chill. In the passing days, Sam and Sarah develop a close bond, participating in uplifting activities such as singing and sharing meals. During the evenings, Sam, as usual, chats with Alfred, sharing his innermost thoughts. In the morning, he calculates the food supplies for the two of them, and realizes that it will not last for long. As a result, he sends to the lowest apartment in the building, containing zombified occupants. He drills a hole in the door and shoots all the zombies from a safe distance before venturing inside to retrieve the food provisions. However, when he returns to his apartment, he doesn't find Sarah anywhere and begins to panic. After searching for a while, Sam finally finds her on the roof. Sarah states that she wants to leave, saying that it is impossible to survive in this building for long. She argues that if they stay here, they will never know if there is any other safe place beyond beyond this apocalypse. Therefore, she chooses to depart, rather than endure an uncertain future within the same confines. Sam tries to persuade her to stay, but Sarah appears resolute in her decision. This makes Sam angry, and he curses at her. In response, Sarah simply says that if he doesn't leave, he will either succumb to death or madness. Shortly after their heated argument, Sam feels remorseful and decides to apologize to Sarah for his hurtful words. But upon returning to his room, he discovers her lying down, lifeless in the bed. Here, it is revealed that his conversations and entire encounter with Sarah were mere hallucinations. In truth, she never regained consciousness after he accidentally shot her that fateful night. Accepting the harsh reality, Sam mourns her loss, pays tribute to her, and respectfully covers her body with a white sheet. After this, he goes through Sarah's backpack and finds a camera containing precious pictures of her family. Seeing these pictures, Sam learns that Sarah was a married woman and a loving mother, evoking further emotions within him. In the aftermath of these events, Sam decides to take Sarah's advice. Even though she never gave him in that advice, 
he's just batshit insane, but it's good advice nonetheless. And hence, makes preparations to leave the building. Before that, he burns all his recording tapes, bidding farewell to the remnants of his past. He then releases Alfred, who wanders into a nearby apartment that Sam secures by locking him inside. However, the act of burning the tapes triggers a fire alarm, attracting the attention of the horde of zombies outside. The blaring sound causes the relentless undead to break down the doors and flood the building. Although Sam manages to eliminate a few with his weapon, their overwhelming numbers force him to lock himself inside the elevator. With no options left, he climbs the elevator shaft and ascends to the upper floor. One zombie relentlessly pursues him, but Sam manages to incapacitate it by hitting it with a blunt object. After this, he climbs up through the same hole he had made earlier. The place is swarming with deadly zombies, but thankfully, a thick layer of smoke prevents them from detecting Sam, who stealthily manages to slip away. In the final scene, Sam reaches the rooftop and throws a rope towards the adjacent building. Unfortunately, when he swings across the street, he collides with the wall and loses consciousness while hanging in mid-air. A few moments later, he regains consciousness and then summons all of his strength to pull himself up onto the rooftop. Sam then stares out into the seemingly endless skyline of Paris and vows to continue moving forward, nurturing a flicker of hope for the existence of other survivors. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.